Today we're going to expand on straight line graphs by looking <coughs> at specific questions on the property of parallel and perpendicular lines. So we should remember from normal IGCSE maths that for parallel lines, the gradients of the two lines must be the same. And for perpendicular lines, if you multiply the gradients, you should get minus one. Okay. And we looked at, we had basic examples of this or questions of this at IGCSE uh, standard mass level. And now we're going to expand on these ideas by looking at more complex problems involving gradients of lines. So let's go straight to the first example. And the first example says there are three coordinates, A, B, and C. And the first thing we'll notice about the coordinates is they are made up of some variable K right, or some integer value k, and what they want us to do is find the possible values of k if a, b, and c are collinear, right? So it's important that we understand what collinear means. If points are collinear, that means that they exist on the same line, okay? So for instance, if we had to draw a straight line, like so, if this was point A and this was point C, we're saying that B must exist somewhere on that line. So they're all on the same line. Now, the important thing to note here, right, is while we don't know anything else about these coordinates, if they are collinear, that means that they must be going in the same direction. In other words, the gradients of these two lines must be the same, right? And we know something about the gradients of lines that are parallel. They are equal to each other. And so what we can do is we can look at A to B and then from B to C. And we can determine what their gradients are and we can equate them and solve for K. All right. So in order to calculate gradient, uh, gradient is calculated by... If we want to calculate the gradient of a line, that is equal to its change in rise over run. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That gives us the gradient of a line right between two points. So we'll just call this point 1 and this point 2. So this is then x1, this is y1, this is x2 and y2 and we're going to stick that into our gradient. That's just from A to B. So into our equation, y2 we said was k, and y1 is 2, so it's k minus 2, and this is all over x2 minus x1, so x2 happens to be minus 2, and this is minus, and x1 is 8 minus k. So we can just extend this line a little bit. That's the gradient from A to B. Now, if these lines are collinear, meaning they're going in the same direction, their gradients must be equal. Therefore, this gradient must be equal to the gradient from B to C. All right? And so we can renumber and say, okay, this is now maybe equation 1, and this is equation 2. So this is now x2 and y2, and the other coordinate is x1, y1. So putting that in, we need y2, which is 2k. And we're going to subtract y2, or y1, which is k. And this is all over x2, which is minus 8, and minus x1, which is minus 2. So we always put negative numbers in a bracket so that we can see if there's a change in sign. Now from here, this is just a standard equation. We can just solve using whatever method we find appropriate. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify the top and the bottom. So I'm going to get k minus 2 here. That doesn't change. And on the bottom, I have this minus 2. I'm going to have a minus 8 and a minus minus k. So that's going to give me a plus k. And the minus 2 and the minus 8 is going to give me minus 10. And on the other side, I have 2k minus a k. So that gives me 1k. And at the bottom, I have minus 8 minus minus 2, which gives me minus 6. 
from here I can cross multiply, right, to get rid of the denominators. So I'll get 6 times k minus 2, sorry, minus 6 times k minus 2. So I'm going to get minus 6. And minus 2 times minus 6 is going to give me plus 12. Sorry, this is k. And on the other side, I'm going to have k times k minus 2. So that's going to give me k squared minus 10k. And so we've created a quadratic equation, and we can just solve as normal. So k squared minus 4k minus 12 equal to 0. So we want factors of 12. That'll give us 4. So I can think of k minus 6 and k plus 2. That will give us minus 4, and multiply it will give me minus 12, and so k is equal to 6, or k is equal to minus 2. Okay, so the next question says we have the vertices of a triangle, A, B, C. And there's the coordinates for A, the coordinates for B, and the coordinates for C. And the coordinates of C are made up, again, of some unknown value for k, okay? And they tell us to find the possible values of k, that triangle ACB, or the angle for the triangle ACB, is equal to 90 degrees. So what might be useful is for us to have a quick think about what this could look like. So we know the coordinates of A and B. The coordinates for A are minus 4, 2. And the coordinates for B are 5 minus 5, okay? So if we join them with a straight line, right, that's from A to B. And now what we're saying is we're looking for some coordinate of C that a triangle will have the angle ACB, the angle at C, is 90 degrees, okay? And so... We can think, well, that means we have this angle here that is some angle of 90 degrees, right? But we must remember that it could possibly also mean that the angle is down here somewhere where the angle is 90 degrees. So we're looking for the possible values of k to give us this point c, okay? So intuitively, we can see we have multiple places where this could happen, and we want to find them. Where we're going to go about this is by saying for point C to exist, line AC must be perpendicular to line BC, right? Which means that when we multiply their gradients together, it must be equal to minus 1. And obviously, this is going to result in some quadratic, which is going to give us the two points, okay? So just to recap, to calculate gradient, right? So the gradient of some line is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? So what we're saying is if I take the gradient from a to c and I multiply it by the gradient from b to c, I should get minus 1. That's going to give me my equation to solve for k. So from a to c, so I need to identify a and c. So here's a and I've already identified c. Let's call a point 0.1 and c can be point 2, and so this is going to be x1, y1, and this is x2, y2. So let's put that into our gradient equation. So y2 is k plus 2, and we're subtracting y2, which is just 2. This is over x2, which is k, minus x1, which is minus 4. And if we multiply that by the gradient from b to c, so now we need to change our perspective, and now we're going from b to c, so let's call b coordinate 1, and once again we'll call c coordinate 2, so this is now x1, and this is y1. So we need y2, which is again k plus 2, minus, right, and y1 this time is minus 5, all over x2, which is k, minus, and x1 is 5 this time. So when we multiply these two gradients together, we should get 
minus 1. So here we have a standard equation. It's going to end up in a quadratic. We know we should get two possible solutions. All right, so let's simplify, and then we can solve for k. So at the top, I'm going to get k over k plus 4 times k. We have plus 2 minus minus 5, which is k plus 7, all over k minus 5, and that must be equal to minus 1. So what we're going to do now is we're going to multiply the whole expression by the denominator, okay, so that we can bring it up to the other side. Okay, that's going to get rid of it on the left-hand side. So on the left-hand side, I'll just have k and k plus 7, and on the other side, I'll have minus 1 times k plus 4, k minus 5. And now we can just solve as a quadratic. So here we'll get k squared plus 7k equal to minus, do the brackets first, k squared, we have minus 5 plus 4, which is minus k, and then we have minus 20, minus k squared plus k plus 20, simplify, so we have 2k squared on this side, we have plus 6k minus 20 equal to 0. We can divide through by 2. And then we just need factors of 10 that give us 3. And that's going to be 5 and 2. So we'll have k plus 5 and k minus 2 equal to 0. So k is equal to either minus 5 or k is equal to... Two. So there we have our values for k. So k could either be minus 5 or k could be equal to 2. So if we actually go back to point C, which was the point k, k plus 2, we can actually go and work out the two possible values for C. So if k was equal to 2, right, then we would have the point 2 and k plus 2 which is 4 and if k was equal to minus 5 then we would have the point minus 5 and k plus 2 which would be minus 3 okay and what we can do is go and plot these and see what happens so 2 and 4 is over here so let's draw proper lines this time. Right, and that does look like a much better right angle triangle. And then again from minus 5, 3, which is over here. And once again, it looks like a right angled triangle.